Good morning, boys and girls. Today is Tuesday, May the 12th, and we're going to be working on page 271 and 272, and the title of our lesson is Prepositional Phrases. Before I begin, I'm going to tell you a joke. How do you count cows? With a calculator, of course. Ha, ha, ha. Now I know some of you are laughing at my joke. So anyway, we're going to begin today at the top of the page. It says, the object of the preposition is the noun or pronoun that follows the preposition in a sentence. To find the object of the preposition, say the preposition and ask the question, what or whom? The ancient Greeks believed in, in is the preposition, many gods. In what or in whom? Gods. So gods is the object of preposition. So a prepositional phrase begins with a preposition. We're all very familiar with prepositional phrases. We've been marking them all year long. Um, and it ends with the object of the preposition and includes all the words between them. Prepositional phrases are identified with parentheses. And we've been doing that also this year. Remember, these are the parentheses right here. Okay, so in ancient Greece, the word in is marked in blue because it's a preposition. In ancient Greece. In what? In Greece. So Greece is the object of the preposition. And the prepositional phrase is in ancient Greece. The highest part of the city was called the Acrop Acropolis. Okay, so of is our preposition. That is why it's marked in blue. Of what? City. City is your object of preposition. The whole prepositional phrase is of the city. So notice that the simple subject and the verb are never located in the prepositional phrase. Okay? So um, a comma follows each long introductory prepositional phrase of five or more words. The introduction may contain more than one prepositional phrase. And we talked about that yesterday. And we've, we've been talking about that all year long. Prepositional phrases, there can be many prepositional phrases in a sentence. So let's look at the next one. The next sentence has three prepositional phrases in just one sentence. Above the city, above is the preposition. Above what? City. City is the um, object preposition. Of Athens. Of is the preposition. Of what? Athens. Athens is the object of preposition. It's marked in red. If you'll notice, if you'll notice that the word up here, it says object of preposition is written in red. Well, the object of prepositions are written in red in the sentences as well. And likewise, the, the preposition um, is in blue. Okay, so several ancient buildings stand on a hill. So on is the preposition right here. And hill, on what? Hill. Hill is the object of preposition. And the whole prepositional phrase is on a hill. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to practice this. We're um, um, at the bottom, and it says, let's read the directions. Put parentheses around each prepositional phrase. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We're familiar with that. Underline the simple subject once and the verb twice. Okay, subject is a person, place, or thing, and a verb shows action. So we are going to... Um, the next thing says, insert missing commas using the caret. The caret, which is the proofreading mark right here. See page 255 in the grammar handbook for a list of common prepositions. Um, probably some of you looked at that yesterday when you were going over your, your assignment yesterday. So let's begin. It says, the ancient Greeks built several temples for the gods on the Acropolis in Athens. Well, I see three prepositional phrases. So, wh what do you think, where do you think is the first prepositional phrase? Okay, yes, for the gods. Okay, and then the next prepositional phrase is on the Acropolis. 
because on is a preposition. And the very next prepositional phrase is in Athens. And the preposition is in. Okay, so now we have to underline once the simple subject. What do you what do you think this is about? Who is this about? The ancient Greeks built beautiful temples. Um, okay, so remember if we've marked if we've um, put parentheses around prepositional phrases, your subject and your verb are not going to be in the prepositional phrases. So we're just looking at what's left. The ancient Greeks built beautiful temples. So what is your simple subject? Yes, so we need to underline Greeks. Greeks is who this the sentence is about. Okay, so the ancient Greeks, and what is the verb? What's the action going on in here? Built, that's right. So underline this twice. There's lots of marking that we're doing, so you're gonna have to make sure that you pay close attention. The Parthenon was built in honor of the goddess Athena. So I see two prepositional phrases in here. Yes, it is in honor. In honor is the first one. And you got to remember, if you come to another preposition, you can't mark past that preposition. The prepositional phrase is going to begin with the preposition. So we couldn't have said in honor of the goddess Athena. You would have forgotten to mark one of the the prepositional phrases because of is a prepositional is a preposition also so we have to write mark of the goddess Athena also so there's two prepositional phrases basically what I'm saying okay so what is the subject the Parthenon but not the word the so underlined Parthenon and the Parthenon is that building that you see at the very bottom of that page and what is the verb okay some of you are thinking built but you got to include the helping verb also was built so underline twice was built and now let's look at number three it sits high above the city what's your prepositional phrase in this sentence above the city correct above the city and what is your subject we're just looking at at it sits high what do you think the subject is it it should be underlined one time and what's the verb sits that's correct sits okay so number four it was built between 447 and 432 bc so i see a very long prepositional phrase here Yes, between 447 and 432 BC. So that takes out more than half of our sentence right there. So now we only have it was built. So what do you think the subject is? The subject is it. It. Okay, so we're going to underline that once. And what do you think the verb is? This is going to be another one that you're going to underline a helping verb. Was built. Correct. So you can underline twice was built. Okay, number five. Today the Parthenon is famous for is magnificent columns. Okay, so I see a very long, yeah, quite long prepositional phrase. It's at the back of the sentence. Yes, it is for is magnificent columns. Okay, so now we, we're looking at today the Parthenon is famous. So what do you think? the 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 subject is parthenon now don't get scared there is a verb there it's just it's a linking verb so what is the verb is okay so is and number six it is also famous for the marble statues and carvings inside the temple. We're going to take out two very lengthy prepositional phrases here. So for the marble statues and carvings, that's a long one, and then also inside the temple. And the reason why we marked these is remember for is a preposition 
and inside is a preposition. You always start prepositional phrases with prepositions. So we took out most of the sentence. We're looking at now, it is also famous. And again, this is going to be, well, first of all, let's find the subject. The, the subject is it. It's going to be underlined one time. And the, um, the, the verb is is. Okay. And we're going to look at number seven. At different times through the years, the city of Athens was conquered by other countries. Lots and lots of prepositional phrases. Okay. So at different times, through the years, the city of Athens of Athens was conquered by other countries. Wow, look at that. I mean, there are so many prepositional phrases there. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now let's read between the lines. Um, <clears throat> the city was conquered. So what do you think this subject is? City. And what is the subject? Was, I mean, not the subject, the verb was conquered. Okay, so that is a lot of markings right there. And number eight, number eight, the, the temple served many purposes depending on the rulers of the city. Okay, so um, I really only see two prepositional phrases here. On the rulers of the city. So what is the, the, the subject right here? Temple. So underline it one time. And what's the verb served? Okay. So that's going to be underlined twice. And we are almost done. It says number nine, at one time it was used for a Catholic church. Okay. So I see the prepositional phrase at one time it was used for, for is a preposition, for a Catholic church. So now we're only looking at what's in the middle. It was used. So it is the subject. And what is the, the um, verb? Was used. You have to include was. It's a helping verb. Okay. And number 10, the very last one. During the Turkish invasion of Athens, it became a Muslim mosque. During is a preposition. During the Turkish invasion. Of is a preposition. So of Athens, it became a Muslim mosque. So what do you think the subject is? It. We're going to underline that one time. And what do you think the verb is? Became. Became is the verb. All right, so boys and girls, um, this was kind of a lengthy video today, but it's one that we needed a, a review because as you can see, we've marked a lot of things on this page. And what we marked is something that you guys are familiar with, but we you just need practice on it. So that's why we're, we've come back to prepositional phrases to review them again. And I hope this helps you to, um, to complete the back page. So you will do the back page just like this. And boys and girls, I'm going to flip it over real quick. There are lots and lots of prepositional phrases that you need to mark. I just r realized that we forgot to insert the commas. So we're, I'm going to do that really quick. Um, okay, so remember... After a long phrase, for example, the first one that we need to do is look, look at number seven. At different times through the years, comma, and, um, and then number 10, during the Turkish invasion of Athens. And these are like introductory phrases, okay? So those are our commas, and I just wanted to review over that real quick. So I hope you have a great day today. If you have any questions, just ask, and I will try to get back to you. Talk to you later.